Zoo Wee Mama, we've got a new big red monster coming to Marvel Snap. I am talking about Red Hulk. So I'm going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly for him, give you three decks that you can try immediately after he's released, and then I'll give my final ratings and review if I think Red Hulk is going to be worth chasing after with your tokens or spotlight caches, or if he's a bit of a bust and you should save your resources for another card. Now the season announcement video, official one from Second Dinner has still not been released, so this is still data mined, but Red Hulk is showing to be coming out on April 2nd in Spotlight Caches alongside Sebastian Shaw and Echo. This is the first day of the new April season, Zeros to Heroes. Now Red Hulk is a six cost, 11 powered card with the ability when your opponent ends a turn with unspent energy, gain plus four power as long as Red Hulk is in your hand or on the board. Okay, so it's very similar to Evolved Hulk if you're playing Hulk in a high Evo deck where he's getting power when you skip energy. Red Hulk is kind of the opposite. He's gaining power when your opponent ends a turn where they have leftover energy. Whether it's one energy, two or three, it doesn't matter. Any turn they end with unspent energy, Red Hulk will power up by four as long as you have him. So let's get into some of his best synergies. While Red Hulk is very dependent on what your opponent is doing with their own cards and energy, there are some ways you can manipulate it a little bit, okay? If you are playing a card like Magic, you're extending the game to turn seven. Maybe on that seventh turn, your opponent just plays like another six cost card, they float one more energy, you're just giving them more turns to float energy. It also is more turns that you have to draw Red Hulk. And so that can maybe power them up a little bit, you know, get an extra trigger in there, which is nice card like Sandman, if you're against a cheap deck and they don't have many six cost cards, you play Sandman, your Red Hulk's powering up, okay? Because they're not filling their energy curve on turns five and six if their deck is really cheap and they can only play one card a turn. And then we've got something like Wave, okay? This could be really interesting. Obviously, Wave can help you get out Red Hulk early, but it means, you know, your opponent might have leftover energy on turn six, even if they're playing a six drop, because they'll have two extra energy once Wave sets the cost of everything to four. You could also, you know, go for like a clog deck kind of thing where you're filling up your opponent's board, so they don't want to play cards because of board space and they float energy that way. But at the end of the day, Red Hulk is very dependent on what your opponent is playing and how they choose to fill out their curve. So even his best synergies are fairly weak in comparison to most cards. Now let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly for Red Hulk. Start off with the good. He's 11 power at his worst, okay? Even if he doesn't power up, he's 11 power. That's solid. That's huge power on a single lane. It might be enough to win it, okay? Even though it's not amazing, sometimes it's just good, just having huge power. He is bigger than Infinite if he triggers three times. Even if he triggers twice, that is a 619, which is basically Infinite, but you don't have to skip the previous turn. You don't need to play War Machine to get him out on time. I mean, he can just come down, and so that could be huge. And again, it's fighting really hard for a single lane. I mean, he's competing with Infinite and Blob here in terms of the amount of power he could potentially put on a single lane. He does give a discount to Scar since he's always at least 11 power. So if you do have the game going seven turns or you manage to get Red Hulk out early through some kind of energy cheating, then that discount Scar, that can be nice. And then he doesn't really need synergy, okay? Because he depends on what your opponent's playing, it doesn't matter as much what's in your deck. Obviously, there are ways to, you know, manipulate it a bit, as I mentioned, but you could put him in, like, a zoo deck, okay? And if your opponent skips a bunch of turns with leftover energy, then he's still going to power up, even in your zoo deck. Whereas a card like Blob, if your deck is really low power cards, Blob may not actually hit his 15 power if you play him on turn 6, okay? So, not having great synergy can be a good thing or a bad thing, right? It goes both ways. Now, to talk about the bad, first up is that, yeah, he dies to Shang-Chi, but so does every other big card. Okay, this isn't really that bad. I do want to say it here because people always say like, oh, you know, it's just going to lose to Shang-Chi. Well, no, there's so many targets for Shang-Chi out there. I mean, Blob has always lost to Shang-Chi. 
but Blob was insanely overpowered when he came out and he got nerfed, okay? So it's not actually that bad. He's one of many cards that died to Shang-Chi. He is worse if you draw him later in the game. Okay, as I mentioned, in order to power him up, he needs to be in your hand or on the board. So if you draw Red Hulk on turn six, he's just a 6-11, unless your opponent uh, floats some energy on that final turn or if it's a seven turn game, same thing. But if you do draw him early, he will be powering up, which seems like a really good thing, but it means your hand is a bit worse, right? I mean, in the early game, you want all your cheap cards in hand. If it's turn one, you want your one cost card, your two cost cards, have your options, choose the best card for the situation, and you wanna have something to play. If you have Red Hulk in hand early, he has a higher chance of powering up, but it means your hand overall is probably worse. It means it's probably clunky. Maybe you didn't draw your early card. You know, you have Red Hulk in your hand instead of the two cost card you wanted to play on turn two in your hand, right? That's in your deck. He does rely on your opponent's curve, as I mentioned. So there are just some decks you're gonna face that they don't float any energy, okay? You will not get any extra power out of Red Hulk, even if you had him in your hand on the very first turn. But there are some decks where they might commonly flow energy, specifically on turns one and two. A lot of decks just start going really on turn three. He's another big six cost card, and that seems good. You know, Blob's really strong, right? Cards like Magneto are really good. But how many can you fit in your deck? I mean, if you just had five Blobs, in the game like if they just printed like blob, blob number two blob number three and they were just like slightly different power but all really good you wouldn't put them all in one deck right you cannot have that many cards and so while red hulk is a big powerhouse we already have some of those in the game and so they're really just starting to compete with each other right it might not be put all these powerhouses in your deck it's like okay well put red hulk or this other powerhouse right choose one Okay, whichever one you own, just use that one. They become very replaceable, which means they're not as needed and they don't shape the meta as much. And then he's just kind of boring, right? I mean, you can't do anything with him too much. You're relying on your opponent to do stuff. He'll power up or he won't, but he's just a big, boring stat stick card. Now it's time to talk about Red Hulk's reasonable floor and reasonable ceiling. Okay, this is something you're gonna see. Him at his worst and him at his best, okay? Achievable best. And so at his floor, he's a 6'11", right? If you draw him on turn six, or if you drew him right away, but your opponent did not go any turns with unspent energy, then he's a 6'11". So that's his floor. That's above the line of being viable in that there will be some games where that's helpful, right? It's not a horrible card. Obviously it's worse than just the base Hulk, but there are some games where you're like, man, I just need like big 11 power put on this lane and that'll get the job done. So it's viable, but it's not competitive. You would never purposely run a 611 with no ability. Again, you would just run the Hulk, but even then there's, there's better options. So it's not competitive, but it is viable. So it's an okay floor. In terms of his ceiling, I think maybe it's plus 20 power. Okay, this is already asking for a lot. I think it might be more along the lines of plus 16, but I'll, I'll be a bit generous here that his practical reasonable ceiling is plus 20 power this would mean your opponent floated some energy on five turns okay this puts red hulk at a 631 now it's possible technically that you played magic it's a seven turn game and your opponent floated energy on all seven turns and red hulk becomes a 639 but the chances of that are extremely low. That's like a one in 1,000 at least scenario. And if that happens, your opponent has already lost the game. So that's not a reasonable or practical ceiling. Um, I think it's him being plus 16 power or plus 20 power. Okay, so a 627 or 631. And, and that's being a bit generous. That is above the line of being overpowered. If he could consistently hit that ceiling, if you consistently get your opponent to float energy on four or five turns, and he's over 20 power, that would be good. That would be amazing. That's kind of like OG Blob, or just this huge card for sure gonna win the lane you play it on, okay? Where is he usually? I think he's often gonna get plus zero or plus four power. I mean, really the big thing is drawing him. You draw half your deck by turns three to four, okay? On turn three, you will draw the sixth card in your deck. 
and you've got 12 cards in your deck. So you're halfway there. Turn four, you draw the seventh card. Okay, so turn three or four, you can expect to draw Red Hulk. That means you're hoping your opponent floats energy somewhere between turns three and six. But most energy, I would say, is flow down turns one or two. A lot of decks just don't have one cost cards or you didn't draw them because it's early in the game. And, you know, some decks don't get going until turn three. So oftentimes decks do fill out their curve. Okay, they just do, especially if you're playing like against Thanos, they've got all these one cost stones, they will squeeze in if they have extra energy. So I don't think you can reasonably ask for three to four. You know, I think one, maybe two may happen if you are playing magic. Maybe if you're also doing Sandman to extend the game, you might have that occur where you could almost consistently get two, but I think it's going to be zero or one. Okay, I, I think by the time you draw him, you're hoping to see at least one turn where your opponent floats energy, in which case it puts Red Hulk at a 615. That you can play on any location. You don't need to skip the turn prior. So that is about the power of Blob. Blob still often gets a little bit higher than 15, but it's about the power of Blob. It's better than Giganto. It's more powerful and you can put on any lane. And so I think that's solid. Okay, he's a 615 with no ability is how I envision him in my head. Sometimes a 611 often a 615 and then sometimes you know a 619 or 623 right sometimes a little bit higher but that's where i vision his power level that is the above the line of being competitive if he is hitting 615 that is a nice competitive big huge power six cost card but it's definitely not overpowered so the first deck i've put together for red hulk is this triple hulk high evo i think this is going to be an amazing home for him because this high evo deck already loves magic okay you play magic you extend the game you float some energy that helps out your sunspot your cyclops your she hulk all that good stuff and it also gives your opponent more turns to float some energy as well which now powers up red hulk so i took out infinite i put in red hulk and we also are running pixie just a nice spicy card here could cheese you out some wins if you do get lucky Next up, we've got Red Hulk in the best deck in the game, Thanos, okay? So oftentimes Thanos decks are running Blob, but they're ramping up so they can't afford to have multiple six cost cards. They will also have Eliath and Magneto, okay, or some other big card. So I've taken out Magneto and I slapped in Red Hulk. Now he's not giving you the tech that Magneto gives you, but he's gonna hit 15 power. He's gonna be a little bit more powerful often. And so this could be solid, all right? If you don't draw Blob, you play Red Hulk. Or if you did draw Blob, but Red Hulk powered up, then you, you play Red Hulk instead, or you just play one or the other, or both. You know, if you ramp up, you play Blob on five, Red Hulk on six, just these huge monsters, right? Just monsters of power dominating their lanes. Thanos decks are always good. If you've got big power cards like this, he can ramp them out. He can make good use of them. And lastly, I've put Red Hulk in the Big Dumb Idiots deck by Gunny T. Okay, so I've adjusted it a tiny bit, and I did take out Destroyer and put in Red Hulk. So now you can really focus zero on a Tuma or even, you know, Maximus if needed. And same thing with Cosmo. You're not relying on zero or Cosmo to stop Destroyer. We can play Red Hulk instead. Okay, Destroyer is a 616. If I think Red Hulk can consistently hit about 15 power, then that's good enough for me. And so we've just got big power stuff in here. You know, the whole goal of this deck, you really start going on turns three, uh, two if you did get armor out. But start turn three, you get going. Turn four, you play something with 10 power. That gets your scar discounted. You look to play Ronin and, you know, you just squeeze in huge power. Okay, it's just these big dumb idiot stacks full of stat sticks. You just blow some people off the board. So I'm definitely excited because this is a fun list to try out. So let's get into my final review and ratings for Red Hulk. So here is the spotlight variant for Red Hulk that is coming out this first week when he's in caches. Now, in terms of being fun, no, he's not fun. He's another big, boring stat stick. Okay, we're getting these basically every month. I mean, January, we got Scar. February, we got Call Obsidian. Uh, March, we got Mockingbird. Just these big powerhouses. Okay, they can be good, but they're not really fun. They don't really interact with the board or do much. And Red Hulk in particular, you can't even build around too much. You just hope your opponent floats energy. Like, it's so little interaction. It's crazy. In terms of being flexible, you know, I think his flexibility is amazing. I really do. You know, Blob 
is really strong, but Blob, you do want a deck that has big powered cards. Okay, Thanos works because they got big stuff and they got a lot of cards in the deck. If you're playing something else with big power cards, great, but you would never put Blob in like a zoo deck with a bunch of low power cards. You could do that with Red Hulk. You could put him in a deck that actually has low powered stuff and he will be your, you know, single big six cost powerhouse that you just play when you really need to add as much power as possible to a lane, okay? And you can even play him behind armor or Cosmo to obviously protect him from Shang-Chi or Shadow King. So his flexibility is amazing because he doesn't require much synergy at all. You just hope your opponent skips synergy. In terms of being competitive, I think he's good. You know, these big powerhouses are just good. Okay, people always underestimate him. They always think that a card that just has big stats is going to be whatever. Oh, it's just going to die to Shang-Chi. It's not going to do much. It doesn't do anything. Well, Cold Obsidian's a pretty dang good card, and he dies to Shang-Chi. Blob was overpowered when he came out, and he died to Shang-Chi and got wrecked by Shadow King. But your opponent still needs to have those cards in their deck, draw them from their deck in-game, pay the energy to play them, and play them and hit your card. I mean, there's still requirements. It's still a commitment, even if you're getting hit with Shang-Chi. And so if you can just slap down 15 or let's say 19 power fairly consistently, it's gonna be good. Okay, it is. You're forcing your opponent to need an answer. And if they're answering your Red Hulk, you know, maybe you're playing Blob or something big in a different lane. So I do think he's competitive, but I don't think he's really special. Okay, and so my take on Red Hulk, not to get him. I don't think he's needed. I don't think you need to chase after him, especially if you own Blob, okay? And this may sound weird that I'm saying, look, he's a flexible card, he's competitive, but I think he's just another big six cost. I don't think he's unique. Again, as I've talked about, he's not really adding anything new. He's not gonna shape the meta. I don't know if there's decks that need him. If you don't have Red Hulk, you're playing Blob. If you already have Blob in your deck and you want a second spot, you can play like Magneto, okay? Do we need more of these big powerhouses? It gets to a point where there's too many and we just got to pick our favorite ones. So I don't think he's needed in that sense. He's not great or exciting for deck building. His spotlight week is Sebastian Shaw, who is a former season pass card and is series five. But it's also paired with Echo, who's a series four card and neither Sebastian Shaw or Echo see a ton of play. They're not amazing cards. Echo's kind of fun, nice tech, but they're just not amazing cards. They're not worth chasing after, in my opinion. So I think the caches for April 2nd isn't worth chasing after. And Red Hulk himself is nothing special to chase after either, especially if you already own Blob, okay? You can just play Blob instead of Red Hulk in most decks. So give it a couple days to wait and see, but I do not think that Red Hulk is worth chasing after with 6,000 tokens or your spotlight keys in a pretty mediocre spotlight cash week. And that's how I see it. So let me know what you think of Red Hulk. If you're excited for him, what decks you think he's going to be good in and how big you think he's going to get on average, right? Am I am I wrong in that and that he's going to hit 611 or 615 often? Do you think he will usually hit 619 or 23? Let me know your thoughts. And until then, stay positive. I'll see you next time.